All right, my Virgo friends, how are you today? Aaron here bringing you your monthly horoscope for October of 2020. We have one of the most incredible months ahead of us. All right, I don't want to lie. It's absolutely life-changing, groundbreaking, life-changing energy ahead of us, okay? And there's so much going on. You're going to have to bear with me. I'm, I'm going to try to make this as condensed as possible so it's not an hour long. But um, to start this off, we're going to be doing a lot of shadow work. We've got, we've got a full moon here today, the very first of the month, uh, whenever you're watching this. There's a full moon on the first of the month. Okay, There's a full moon, a uh, blue moon at the end of the month on the 31st. Um, we're going to have a lot of fate and destined connections coming up, okay? This life-changing, life-creating, uh, manifesting energy is coming up. A lot of shadow work that we cannot run from. We cannot run from our shadows. We cannot hide from our shadows. It's part of us, okay? And this month is really surrendering and digging deep into that shadow work to allow uh, the unfolding and the blossoming of these flowers that are buried deep, deep within our subconscious minds and our bodies and our hearts and our souls to flourish and to grow, okay? So this little message came to me as I was meditating about how to talk about these. And I've been saying it for all the signs. So here we go. Now, we've got Mars retrograde this month. we got a Venus retrograde is going to be happening this month as well. This is very positive, okay? I want to, I want to flip the script here and talk about the positivity of these retrogrades, all right? Now, with Mars retrograde and Venus, uh, Mercury retrograde, Part of the message that came through is that nothing is happening fast, okay? Yet nothing is happening slow. And all is perfect as long as I stay in my lane and surrender to the flow, all right? Surrender to the flowing river. Surrender to the blowing breeze. We're not forcing something. We're not pushing something. We're not pushing a square peg into a round hole this month. We're not anticipating the next move. We're not anticipating the next bite of food while we're still, have, we're still chewing the last bite. Okay, it is extremely important. So we have this full moon here on the 1st, okay, at 5.06 p.m. So the sun will be here at 9 degrees of Libra in your second house. Virgo friends, this is highlighting your finances, okay? This is highlighting money, the things that we value, bringing balance into our lives of that which we value, bringing balance into our finances, balancing our checkbooks, okay? And across the way here, we've got the moon, conjunct Chiron, healing aspects going on here, okay? And this is about the collective, um, shared resources, if you will. What's mine and what's yours, okay? What's mine and what's yours? And maybe there's been fear in the past of, of linking up and, and working together with somebody or joining or, you know, moving in with somebody or, or joining businesses, uh, something like that. And this is what's being highlighted right now. And coming from this balanced place of the cardinal sign of Libra, okay, we're bringing balance into these relationships that we have. Balance fully illuminating our relationship with others that we are having shared resources with. Again, whether this is people you work with, this is uh, your partner that you live with, a roommate that you live with, business things that you're, you're, you're thinking about uh, getting a building or going in on something together. Okay, there's healing that's going on here that's saying this is our path, this is the path that we need to go on and allow this healing to come in and to change our perspective, okay? And there's a lot of perspective changing um, energy that's going on this month, a lot of shadow work and we're gonna get into that here shortly. On the second, Venus is going to leave the 12th house and enter the first house. Okay, so Venus has been in the 12th house of karmic endings and completions and value. Uh, you know, Venus deals with our relationships as well. So Venus coming into the first house, okay, this is loving self, valuing self, okay, being appreciative of who you are, what you've been doing, who... Uh, the, the services that you're providing, you're a Virgo, which means you are meant to be a person of service, okay? And Venus coming here and saying, value, 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 value what we are giving out into the world. Value ourselves. Make sure that we're pampering ourselves just as much as we would be pampering the love of our life or, or you know, our children or whatever it may be. And it's taking that time for self to really honor ourselves and value ourselves, okay? So Venus there, moving into the, set, to the first house, very, very powerful. Okay, 
Now on the 8th, this is when the magic starts to happen. I mean, that's already an awesome placement for Venus to be out of the 12th, you know, because it's like, again, it's been there like moving through the 12th house and this is, you know, the karmic, the karmic stuff. Okay. And now it, it becomes tangible here in the first house. Okay. Um, so on the 8th, we've got, th this is, this is the life changing stuff. Okay. Saturn in the fifth house. This is about our creative self-expression, all this down here and being the boss of our lives, being the boss, uh, taking authority, transforming our lives, adding abundance into our lives. Okay. Slowly but surely expanding and transforming these two together. And, and Saturn is saying, let's make it real. Okay. This is you. This is your personality. Let it shine. Allow your, allow this, uh, transformative energy to come through your personality and allow it to help transform others. Okay your place of service. So Saturn here is going to start to septile Neptune for the third and final time for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, hundreds of years. Okay. Saturn septile Neptune in their both in their, in their respected home signs. Okay. 176 years for Neptune to go around 30 years for Saturn to go around. We'll never see a Neptune return. Never. We'll never see Neptune return to Pisces. Okay. And we have Saturn home in Capricorn. Okay. Creating this life, the, 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 the creation of this physical world, the laws of our physical reality, the laws of the third dimension. And Neptune is the, the no laws of, of the higher dimension of the unconscious, the collective conscious, the, uh, the spiritual realm, the dreams, our creativity. Okay. So this is a, this is a manifestation of our dreams and our creativity and bringing them into physical third dimension to bringing them into this life. Okay. And not only do we have Saturn septile to Neptune, we have Uranus septile to Neptune, Uranus here in the ninth house about travel and philosophy and education. Okay. There's breakthrough communication, breakthrough knowledge that you're able to tap into and that you're able to bring to other people. This is huge. Okay. Because the seventh house is all about, uh, personal relationships with other people. It's all about relationships. So this is like dreams coming through the knowledge that you're being able to share this breakthrough Eureka aha knowledge that you're sharing with other people. And Saturn saying, let's take this part of our personality. Let's make this extremely real and manifest our dreams. Okay. And maybe we're manifesting the, uh, a dream relationship here of Virgos. If, if you're a single Virgo, this could very well be your personality is finally shining, coming through. You're not afraid to share this, this beautiful depth of knowledge that you've been going on. You've got Mercury here in Scorpio, which is going into the depths of your own wisdom of your own mind. Okay. And this septiles, Uranus septile to Saturn, Saturn septile to Neptune, Neptune septile to Uranus. Okay. This again is this fate and destined connections that the universe is saying manifest your dreams. Now, our dreams are going to be manifested when we do surrender and do the shadow work. Okay, so the shadow work comes. All right, Mercury here is already making its way through that. I must be willing to go to the depths of my own soul. I must be willing to go to the depths of my desires, power, uh, my sexual fantasies my deepest, darkest secrets. I must be able to communicate from a place of vulnerability. Third house is about communication. All right. Mercury is going to retrograde here on the 13th. This is extremely positive. Mercury retrograde here in Scorpio. Mars is retrograde in Aries. Mars rules Aries. Mars rules Scorpio. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. Okay. So we've got Gemini, we've got the North node and Gemini going this direction. We've got to be focused on our careers here. Okay. Focused on our careers, focused on going in our own path, making our own way. All right. Maybe we're starting a whole new business or a whole new chapter in our lives. All right. Mercury retrograde here in the third house. We're, we're, we're putting things to rest. We're putting our minds to rest the way that we used to think about things. Our ego is put to rest. And since Mars rules, Aries and Scorpio. Mercury rules Virgo, your ruling planet, sleeping, sleeping. So what energy is forward moving that is allowing things to shift? Well, that's Pluto. Okay. Pluto, 
Pluto will be direct, by the way, um, by the 13th. I, I don't have it on here which day Pluto goes direct. Follow, follow along for the dailies, and I'll tell you which day Pluto goes direct. It's right around the same time. Um, so Pluto is saying transformation, okay? And this is about our communication here. Okay, Mercury communication here in the third house. Pluto will be direct in your fifth house. So this is saying it's time, it is time, my Virgo friends, to step up with your bright, shining, beautiful personalities. Allow ourselves to do that shadow work. Allow ourselves to communicate vulnerably. Okay, communicating vulnerably. And the Virgo energy, I'm a Virgo rising, I get you. You know, we can be very analytical, we can be very focused, we can be very critical and what is right and what is wrong. And let's be honest with ourselves, you know, when, when somebody else has wronged us, then we want to cut them out of our lives, okay? And, and how many ways have we been, respectively, have we been hypocritical? That, 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 that this thing that someone did over here that hurt us, we have done in one way or another to somebody else, okay? So this is, this is surrendering. This is part of that surrendering, okay? Surrendering and going within and, and seeing where... Um, where we can be wrong, where we have been wrong, and allowing ourselves to open up. And we've got the sun here in Libra, you know, which is about balancing our relationships. All right. And Mercury in the third house in Scorpio. This is about that deep, vulnerable communication. And since the sun is about relationships, and this is deep communication, and we have Pluto transforming our personalities and the way that we're talking and communicating with other people. Okay, so this is a huge opportunity for us to change and transform our lives, transform the way that we communicate, okay, a little bit more humbly. We're going to be eating some humble pie as we're doing our shadow work this month, okay? So that happens on the 13th. On the 16th, we have a new moon in the sign of Libra. Again, new beginnings in the place of work, new beginnings in the relationship, you know, in relationships and how you're dealing and communicating with other people in your life, Okay. Um, powerful new beginnings, new beginnings. And when we have, again, Mercury and Mars retrograde, this is putting things to rest, okay? And allowing that vulnerable communication to truly come out. And when we come through this, this, this humble, uh, vulnerable kind of a way, this also opens up again on, on how we're, uh, our personality is being perceived and transmitted as well in our career path. Okay, you see how that's tying in there? So the North Node moving through the career, North Node saying go in this direction, North Node saying we must seek our own path, this new beginning here in, in uh, balancing our communication, balancing being vulnerable in communication, and bringing finances and money and stability, stable relationships coming into our lives during this new moon time. Okay, whether that's partnerships or, or uh, relationships, if you're already in a committed relationship, then that means it's going to be stronger and you're going to be able to communicate and open up with your partner uh, and talk about these very beautiful things as well as new money coming in, new opportunities for work and the way that you're making money is coming in. Okay, really powerful. On the 22nd then, the sun is going to finally leave and enter the sign of Scorpio. Okay, furthering our shadow work, shining the light finally. So it's like Mercury is ahead here. You know, Mercury, when it's ahead of the sun, is that Parmethean energy where it's, I've stolen the fire from the gods and given it to humanity. So that means Mercury is ahead of the sun. Mercury is ahead of the sun in its own shadows. And it cannot see exactly where it's going. But Mercury in mythology, uh, the very fast moving planet, you know, is, is, is half in the physical world and half in, in the underworld at the same time. You know, it's blinking in and out of this physical existence and the non-physical world. Okay, that, that Neptune kind of energy. Pluto, Neptune, Cancer, there's, you know, the emotions. All right. So, Sun, Mercury conjunct at two degrees. This is huge. This is so powerful that it's happening at two degrees. Why? Because it's creating more of these beautiful septiles. Okay, so third house here about communication, communication from the depths of your souls, the sun shining the light on the shadows, okay, and having that vulnerable, open communication that is absolutely necessary in life to get us to where we're going and to allow the transformation to happen to solidify our dreams manifesting into reality. Okay, that's a lot. So this Mercury sun conjunction is going to create a septile here to the south node. Okay, now if this is communication, 
And we're talking a little bit about relationships here. And the fourth house definitely deals with home and family life. There is a septile here, uh, which is saying, you know, again, a fate and destined connection and a release. You know, maybe you're afraid that you'd never have a, a you know, a solid home and family life or, or um, your connection with your family, the connection with... Uh, the connection that you need with nature, the connection you have with yourself, okay, the connection you have with the others, or am I ever going to find that kind of love and, and have this beautiful home and family? You know, it's just like we can put some of these thoughts to rest, as it doesn't it doesn't matter, okay? You know, it's like it's like staying in our lanes, staying and going with the flow, okay? So it's allowing this healing. So sometimes our minds, uh, you know, we we determine something that that might not be the case. You know, I'm unworthy of love. I'm an unworthy of, of, of a home, uh, you know, this, this kind of a, a family life and a dog with a white picket fence and yada, yada, whatever. All right. So, so the sun, Mercury conjunct together in this very vulnerable and open place here about communication. Uh, septile of the family life, this means that you're going to be able to have this open communication, vulnerable communication with the family and to greater your relationships once again as well. The Sun, Mercury, that are septile to the South Node, about releasing and letting go, will both be creating septiles over here to Chiron. Chiron, again, is the wounded healer. Okay, this is about shared resources. So this is highlighting what's happening here on the 1st. All right, so on the 22nd, it is re-highlighting what happened here on the full moon. Okay. And Chiron is saying, heal these wounds, heal this idea that, that I'm not good enough to start this career with somebody else, or I'm not good enough to start this and join forces with other people to create something greater than self. Okay. So there's an interesting, you know, aspects of relationship that are going on, although Neptune is the only one that's in the real partnership relationship house. But you have so much here in the fifth house, which does deal with romance. Okay, this breakthroughs, uh, this solidifying your own romantic self and the transformative and, and uh, abundant, expansive energy that all three of these planets are bringing with romance into your lives and through your personality, again, highlights that this, this is a great opportunity, uh, again, whether you're in a relationship or not, to have these dream relationships really begin to manifest. And the seeds that are planted in October will begin to manifest as well in November, okay? That connection is going to be happening all the way through November 23rd, all right? That's the, so the 25th is this Sun-Mercury conjunction. Now, on the 27th, Mercury is going to retrograde back into Libra, okay? Rebalancing our communication and refocusing here on, on money and finances. At the same time, well, same day anyway, Venus is going to also enter the sign of Libra, Okay, so we're going to have Libra and Mer uh, excuse me, Venus and Mercury both in the second house dealing with finances, dealing with uh, security, dealing with the valuing of your personal possessions and things, okay, as well as balancing, you know, nonetheless, Libra is always about balancing relationships and bringing balance to our lives, okay? So Mercury is bringing balanced communication into our lives and Venus is bringing balance of what we value into our lives. And this isn't about blowing our money. You know, this is an opportunity here as well to save some money. We could be having a lot of money coming into us with the sun right now in the sign of Libra when Venus enters on the 27th and Mercury enters on the 27th. Again, with Mercury retrograde, we have this vulnerable way to come about it, to come about uh, our work, to come about how we're looking at our finances. And this is a great opportunity to save money and prepare for the future. Okay. So uh, lastly, on the 31st, the sun is going to be here in Scorpio. Okay. And the moon will be here conjunct Uranus in Taurus. All right. So this is third house. This is about communication. Once again, deep, vulnerable, open communication, shining the light on these shadows. Okay. And this full illumination in the ninth house, this is about this collective knowledge, this collective wisdom. And with breakthrough planet of Uranus being in conjunction and opposition, once again, this is uh, uh, that, that, 
you know, butter melting. You know, this, this what was solid is just melting. We have this solid idea of something, Taurus, this very solid foundation of something, and it's just crumbling apart in a very positive, positive way. Okay, so this is third house communication again, vulnerable communication, and in the ninth house, this is a collective communication, collective knowledge. Okay, personal knowledge to collective knowledge, and we're doing all of this shadow work this month down here in the third house is very powerful okay to allow that breakthrough to happen up top so this is again like furthering that what what somebody else says about me doesn't matter it's about me doing me and me following you know me staying in my lane and surrendering to the flow and what other people's opinions or other people's thoughts or or if they have um you know, you should be doing this or you should be doing this or you should be going on this path because that. And it's just like, it doesn't matter. We create our own breakthroughs. We create our own destiny. We create our own lives. And speaking of destiny, of course, the moon conjunct Uranus is going to create that fate and destined connection to Saturn in your fifth house. All about your personality. All about you shining your light, uh, your creative expression, your creativity. Okay. And romance, all right? So there's, there's a huge opportunity this month for, for beautiful romance, for beautiful shadow work, for amazing, deep, deep, vulnerable conversations to happen to allow breakthroughs into our lives that resolve issues that have been going on for weeks, months, potentially years, okay? To reprogram our minds, to look at situations differently, and to honor the idea that sometimes, you know, the, the, the quote unquote negative things happen for all these positive things to happen in our lives. And we can truly look back at our lives at the negative stuff. I'm telling you, if we do this, if we sit down with ourselves and, and, and try to look at how much positivity has come from every single scenario that we looked at as negative or harmful or that something, somebody did something to me. You know, we can flip the entire script and nothing happened to you. Nothing happened against you. This is the universe happened for you, put you in this direction or this door closed when it needed to close to put you into this direction so that you could find the, the window or you could find this back door and this back door led to nature and this nature led back to yourself. Okay. Huge, 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 huge month of growth, spiritual growth, depth. Okay shine the light on the shadows and we must be willing to sit with ourselves and not push not force anything but to sit with ourselves and and endure this shadow period because this is the manifestation that we've been waiting for for a long long time okay now we've been waiting for it for a long time but nothing is moving fast but nothing is moving slow all is perfect as long as i stay in my lane and surrender to the flow my friends, if you have any questions, you want to reach out. If you want a personal reading from me, my email is below in the descriptions. Feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to shed some light on whatever is going on in your lives, in our lives here. This is a magic fate and destined month ahead of us. And if we're doing the shadow work, if we're sitting with ourselves and not forcing and allowing the river to flow and flowing with the river, beauty, true beauty and life changing. You know, it's, 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 we're going to get to this. You know, the, the white water rapids are going to turn into this, this beautiful open, you know, bay and all of a sudden we're, we've manifested, you know, we've manifested everything that we wanted into our lives and we have the capability of doing that this month. All right. So have a beautiful month of October and we'll see you follow along the dailies. I'm going to talk about more, you know, the, the Mars squaring everything, the sun squaring everything and some more of the aspects that I didn't get into today. All right. Have a beautiful day and we'll see you tomorrow.